and good morning, good afternoon, and a good evening to you, the good people of the chilled. Hope you're all today, hope you're feeling grand, knows when you will. I do not know what happened to my voice just then. The helium monster is upon us. I remember it was back in the day in 1807 when the helium monster reared its head. Anyway, that's not relevant right now. Anyway, hello. Um, yes, today I thought I would do a acoustic blues lesson. Uh, quite a few people have asked for this, so I thought today be the day. So, um, yeah, I'm basically just going to teach what I did at the beginning. Uh, it's just really good fun to, and, and other bits as well. I'm not just going to teach you that because that's just kind of like, you know, there's, there's, there's more fun to be had. So I'm going to teach you a couple little bits here and there. Uh, and it's just fun just to play around with on an electric or an acoustic. Uh, I'm going to teach you on an acoustic because um, it's in that kind of Robert Johnson style. Um, so, it, you know, it, it lends itself to acoustic really well, but it does work on electric as well. Um, especially playing like a hollow body on the neck pickup, it sounds immense. But uh, but yeah, so without further ado, let me stop waffling and let's get to it. So we're going to be doing, uh, uh, we're going to be learning it in the key of A today. So it's all going to be in the key of A. Um, it's a A is a nice key for blues. A is a nice key. It's, it's a good, it's a good kind of blues rock key, if you will. And you can get a lot of kind of like you know really cool chord voicings and stuff like that with a with A and some nice stretches. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Get on with it. Okay, okay, so uh, let's start at the beginning with this. Okay, so basically what we're doing here is just like an, uh, an A7 uh, kind of triad, so to say, on the uh, ninth and 8th uh, fret. So, um, and we're droning the A open A string with our thumb. So uh, we're kind of up picking with our first finger and droning the A string with our thumb. And the shape we're after is this kind of A7 triad. So... Um, a, a major seven triad. A so, uh, middle finger wants to be on the ninth fret on the uh, G string. First finger wants to be on the eighth fret on the B string, and then your ring finger wants to be on the ninth fret on the high A. Okay, and then like what I said, uh, what we're doing is basically kind of going in. Th th these fingers are kind of going together, so to say. So. It's So I hope you can kind of hear what, what what I mean by that. Like you know, as as you're going dun 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 dun, dun, dun your your first finger is up picking uh, the high E first, then the B, and then the G strings, all, all in the same rhythm. Okay, so that's the first chord we're after. And I say it's just it's just an A seven basically. Uh, so. Um, yeah, so this is the first kind of rhythm we want to be doing with this with this chord. So it's just, da, 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 da. and it does it does get a, got kind of got to get a, you know it does take a bit of getting used to, especially doing the uh, the up kind of picks with that. But you want to be kind of hitting the guitar fairly hard. You know, the old, old blues players they didn't really kind of muck around with the guitars; they really laid into the guitar. So you want to be really giving it giving it you know a good whacking, so to say. Okay, so what we're after on this first chord is this. And then, yeah, you know, hopefully you can hear So, dun, 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 and then stop, and then just drone the, uh, the A. So, uh, really slow, we're after this. And one more time, slower than that, Dave. And one more time for the look, just because, why not? And hopefully you can kind of see what, what, what's going on with uh, with uh, fingeries down here and whatnot. Uh, we are going to be using the thumb, the first finger, and the ring finger for... Uh, not ring finger, sorry, the middle finger on our right hand for this as well. We need we need those three fingers to work in this uh, kind of this, this style of blues. Um, okay, so that's the first one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move this shape down a fret. So basically now it's the exact same shape, but... Um, our middle finger is on the 8th fret on the G, our first finger is on the 7th fret on the B, and our ring finger is on the high E on the 8th. Okay, so it's just basically the same shape, it doesn't change, it just moves down a, uh, a semitone of fret. And 
and it's basically the exact same kind of rhythm. Like, dun, 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 dun. It's just it just sound weird because it's just a semitone. It sounds great. And you go this kind of like pickup line almost before you go to uh, the uh, the eight, uh, G sharp A flat seven uh, triad. It's kind of like from the A you kind of hit it once, and then when you hit it again you you down to that uh, the G sharp or or A flat. And then you go back to your A once. Okay, so that's basically kind of like the first part of the intro, I'd say. So really, really, really slow. Again, I hope this is making sense. But the fear is here, everybody. The fear is real. Okay, so so you got your A7 first. Really, really slow. Okay, one more time. I'll try and do it really slow this time. Okay, so that's the first kind of part of the in of, a, of a blues intro, so to say. That, that that that's the first part of the blues intro we're going to learn today. So uh, it's really really cool. Okay, so it's in that kind of like you know that Robert Johnson kind of Delta blues style, and it's just it's just awesome. It just sounds immense, and I love the sound of it so much. Okay, so um, so the next thing we're going to do is this. No, we are in tune. It's just me pulling the strings out of tune with uh, heavy, heavy handed. But that is the whole point. Like I say, you've got to, to play kind of like that blues, that, that kind of delta blues kind of style. You really want to be hitting the guitar. You want you want that kind of like you know borderline pulling the strings out of tune thing. Really, it just adds to the. You know, it doesn't really have the same impact when you. You know, it it, it sounds good still, but it's a lot more kind of. Um, Authentic, because you hear people like Robert Johnson really digging in. Because you know, back in the day, they didn't have PA's, so when they were kind of like playing in like you know, in like a you know a venue or or out on the street or whatever, wherever they were playing, you know, they had to be loud, so they really had to dig into the guitars and make them as loud as possible. So yeah, that's when you get that real snapping percussive acoustic sound is from them really hammering the acoustic, really hammering it. Okay, so. So we've got that bit. Now we're going to switch over to using all three fingers. So our form is always going to be the bass finger. And then we've got these two fingers working together to do this kind of like claw technique. So we want our ring finger and our little finger on the fifth fret on the B and high E strings. And we want a... Well, you can, you can kind of use your first finger or your middle finger and then swap... I'll tell you what, I'll just use the first finger just for just for, for ease. So, um, two fingers there, and then you want your first finger on the fifth fret on the D. Okay? So that's the first chord. And like I say, what we're doing, we're just playing them all together, so all at the same time. So thumb, first finger, and uh, middle finger on the, on the right hand, all at the same time. Like that. Okay? And what we're after is this. And basically, what we're, what we're doing is basically we're walking down the first finger, the bass finger, a semitone at a time. So, and then down the semitone. Uh, so your fifth fret on your D string goes to the fourth fret D string, third fret D string, and you finish up on the second fret on the D string, and then you go to an E major chord. Okay, so, and the rhythm will kind of, well, there's, there's a couple of different ways you can play this part of the intro. So you, you get your intro here. So you can do it like this with all fingers working together. Or you can pick. You know, stuff like that. It, it's basically totally down to you and how you feel um, you want to play it, really. It really is down to kind of feel. You, you don't have to do this. You can... Yeah, you really can do whatever you want 
you know, it's really important to kind of play how you feel with, with the blues. It's really hard to do, but it's really important to do. So you do your intro. And then you get to this bit and you can do this. Or... Yeah, you can drag it out, you can do anything you want with, hopefully, that makes sense. So like I say, instead of just quick versions or you know, you could do that. Um, you know, you, there's a million different ways to play intros to blues and you can drag them out for as long as you want. You could actually, um, as a little side note, you could actually do this. So you could do your intro. You know, and, and, and then into the song. So you can drag out these intros for as long as you want. Again, it's all down to how you feel. You've got to play it how you feel. You know, you can't just kind of like, you know, just... It, it's good to kind of change it and just, you know, if you want to extend it, extend it. If you want to make it shorter and faster, make it shorter and faster. If you want to do it really slow... Yeah, you can you can kind of literally do whatever you want really with it. See, that that's the cool thing about this style of blues. Um, it's because it's kind of mainly comes from a solo it, soloist perspective, just yeah, you know, one man, one guitar. Uh, you can kind of do whatever you want. You know, if you want to extend for an extra bar, then you can. If you want to cut down on a bar, you can. You can make it work to you in whatever way you feel like it. So you can, like I say, you can. You know, you could even like say like I did there, like speed that bit up, and then slow it down. And then go into the main part of it. So, so that's the intro. So really, really slow the whole thing. I'll I'll just play it straight. But like I say, like I said, there's a million different ways you can play this, and like I say, it's really important to play it the way you feel it. So if you want to extend it, if you don't, if you don't feel ready to go into the verse, extend it. If you want to, if you know, if you just want to get to the verse really quick, just just get get through it as quick as you can, really. And I say you can speed things up and slow things down. You can extend it. You can make it shorter. You can do whatever you want. So the whole thing, really slow, is this. And it's really cool too to um, when you start to slide uh, from your, your your G sharp seven kind of triad into the the A seven uh, A major seven triad like that. So uh, you don't have to, again, it's all down to how you feel. You could start like that, or, you know, you could do that, or you could even, you can do whatever you want. There is, it's just an open book. There's no rules, there's nothing. You can just do whatever you want. It's great. And it's just awesome fun to sit down and play. Okay, so enough jabbering, Dave. Uh, so really slow. And a little variant on that could be no slide that time. You know, literally something like that. I mean, there's a million, there's a million different ways you can play this intro. It's really, really cool. Okay, so that's the intro done. Now we're into the verse, everybody. So uh, the first chord we're going to go for is this kind of like A minor, but like with a a high A note on the on the high E string. So we'd play in the A string open, play in the uh, D, G, and B strings with one finger on the second fret. Oh, like that. And then our little finger will reach over to play the A, the A note on the high E string on the fifth fret. Okay, and again, there's a million different ways to play this chord. You can do it with those those fingers together like a claw or or just pick individual strings again as long as you don't pick the low e string you'll be fine you can pick any or like that you know or or just yeah you, know, you can combination of strumming with your thumb and then picking 
Okay, so you can do this any way you want to feel. Just to say, that's just the first chord. And again, it's down to you to how you feel, to how you play it. Okay, and again, just sit with your guitar and play around and experiment and find what you like the most. I mean, what I like to do is play the A, open A string um, in kind of unison with the B and the high E strings. Like that. Which I really like the sound. It sounds very Robert Johnson-y, very kind of like cutting kind of sound because you haven't got the D and the G string in there. The D, the D and the G string kind of add a lot of fatness. Whereas that's a lot more sharp. And a bit thinner sounding. Okay, so like I say, you can do that any way you want. I'm going to stick with uh, my little preferred technique, which is, I say, open A and then playing the B and the high E strings together in unison like that. Okay, so that's the first thing we will be doing is da, 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 da. and then we want to be moving the high E A note down to the G note on the high E. So we want to be going to the third fret on the high E. So you got this. And again, same rhythm. Da, 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 da. Uh, same rhythm as the intro, sorry, I forgot to mention. Uh. So same thing. Okay? And it's really important to keep that bass note going all the time. Just like that, 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 that. You know, um, it doesn't have to be like bob on time all the time. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be like a metronome. It just has to accompany everything you do. There always has to be a bass note going no matter what you're doing. That's the key to that kind of Delta Blues style uh, to a point where when uh, Keith Richards heard it for the first time, he said, who's the other guitarist? And there isn't actually one. It's just actually them playing rhythm, bass, and lead all at the same time, which is absolutely awesome. And it's great fun to do. Okay, so first chord. Okay, so we've got that big stretch A. And again, you can do it a million different ways. You can go, you know, or, you know, there's a trillion different ways you can play this blue stuff. It's just immense. It really is. Once you dive into it, you don't ever want to come out of it. It's just great fun. Okay, so, um, yeah, first chord, moving down to that, that um, the G note on the high E. And then what you do is we're going back. Before we go to the next chord, the D7, we, we want to be going back to this high A note. So what we're doing there. Okay, and then back to that G note. So the whole thing so far, really slow. What we're going for is this. And if, I've, if I haven't mentioned something, hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing. I always say that. It's my little get out. Um, but... If I forgot to mention them, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So, um, you know, it, 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 it's a little bit more obvious than me talking because I tend to talk nonsense sometimes or miss things out as I'm prone to do. Okay, so, uh, intro. Oh, and also too, um, the bass note is always slightly par muted in certain places. So this intro, you don't want kind of like this. You want that kind of A string kind of palm muted. So it creates more of a percussive kind of sound. Okay, so, um, see, missing things out, forgetting things. So hopefully uh, that covers that. So again, it's just, you know, flat your hand, just over that A string, just enough. So it still sounds, but it's not, it's not that. It's, it's a lot more percussive. Okay, so really slow intro. Or you could play that verse like. You know, like I say, there is a million different ways to play all these things. And, you know, literally, if we were here, if I was to do or go into every single one, we'd be here all day. Okay, so, and I know you're busy people with things to do. So, 
so that's the first chord we're doing. Like I say, we're, it's just this kind of A major shape, but we're adding the high uh, high A note on the high uh, E string, and then we're going to the G note on the high E string as well on the third fret. And we're kind of all alternating between them two. You know. Okay, so the next chord we're going to is a D7. Okay, so it's open D string, and then it's the uh, second fret on the uh, G string with your middle finger. First finger wants to be first fret on the uh, B string, and then your ring finger wants to be on the second fret on the high E. Okay. And this is when uh, we're gonna start to get a bit more fiddly widdly with it. So, so from this. Oh. Okay, and that's where we're gonna stop, so. Okay, so. Dun. So play the whole thing kind of like, you can kind of do it like uh, with two fingers or you can kind of do it like, you know, again with the kind of that kind of claw technique or, or, or strum it or whatever you want to do. Again, it's totally down to you. It's really important. Like I say, I can't handle this home enough to play how you feel. You know, if you want to hit it, hit it. If you want to be a bit more calm with it, be a bit more calm with it. You know, um, it all comes down to you. It has to come from you. Okay, so next chord is... Okay, and that's, that's, where, that's as far as we want to go on the D so, so far. So... Okay, so that's as far as we've got so far, because the next thing we're going to be doing is this. <laughs> Which is just ridiculously awesome. So... And so on and so forth. We'll get to that in a minute, Dave. Calm yourself down, boy. Okay, so what we're doing after that is we're playing the open E string. Now it's first fret uh, low E. And then we're going up to the second fret low E. And then what we're doing is we're going back to this kind of D7 shape, but we're missing out the high E string. If that makes any sense, I hope that makes sense. So open low E string, first fret low E string. And then we're going to the F sharp note, second fret on the low E string. And then we want first finger on the, on the first fret on the B string. And we want our ring finger on the second fret on the G string. So from this. So. Okay. Get that little finger out of the way. You kind of got this this kind of shape going on. It's it's a bit of a fiddly thing to get used to, but once you get it and once it kind of rolls, it's really really cool. And again, palm muted D string. Always palm muting that kind of bass note, really. Until we do until we get to that open E string, which isn't palm muted. Okay. So this is so this is as far as we got so far. So from this. Okay. Okay, so now we've got this little, uh, little kind of twiddly, fiddly roll bit, which is. Which is just ridiculously awesome. It just sounds. It's just. It's just one of those perfect blues licks. It really is. Okay, so what it is, is uh, we're doing the rod. We uh, play, once we got to this run, we play the G string. And then we go back to, uh, so G string, B string, low E string. And then we go to our high E string with our little finger. This is where it gets fiddly, everybody. So G, uh, so G, B. So uh, yeah, so <sighs> calm down, Dave. Right, okay, so. So, low E string, G string, B string, low E string, G string, and then we go to our high E, put our little finger down on the high E, you don't really need your little finger down on the high E until this bit, and then we play the high E string, 
and then take it off and play the high E string open. Sorry, the high E string is on the second fret on the on high E. And then it's open high E string. And then we play B string and then G string. I really hope that makes sense. That sounds like a cacophony of just words and noise. So from a run, so open E, open E on the first fret, open E on the second fret. And then we go to G string on the second fret. B string on the first fret, back to the second fret on the low E, and then we go to our second fret G, high E string second fret, high E string open, and then we finish on the B string uh, on the first fret. And it's it, you, once you kind of get the idea of that, you can kind of roll it in. So, not like that. That was terrible. You know, and you can put the G string in there. You don't have to, but you can. It's it, it, again, it's, it all comes down to feel how you feel. If you want it in there, if you don't want it in there, or whatever. Okay. So, whole thing so far, including the intro, is this. I'll do, I'll do it a bit slower, Dave. Okay, so that's the whole thing so far. And after this D, this D shape with uh, with the F sharp in the bass, we are going back to this A, the first kind of A chord we've got with the the high A note on the fifth fret on the high A. Okay. So, from. Oh yeah, and we need to walk in, walk in this bass note as well with a little finger. I, I totally forgot that. I'm glad I remembered us now. So. So we go open, uh, lo sorry, low E string, second fret, and then we get our little finger, which is this is this is quite difficult to do. You, you could actually just you know, move your finger up; it, it doesn't really matter. I use my little finger for it. But um, you go from the second fret on the low E to the third fret low E, and it walks it back into the A. So. So one more time, really slow. Okay, so this is kind of like back to the the, the one chord, the, the um, you know, the, it's kind of like a little breathing gap basically in the song. So after the D, and again, you can do whatever you want here with the uh, with the heart, the the A and the G note, or again, play around. Have fun. Just mess about with it. Just you know, don't don't be really kind of like help on. I've got to do it this way. You know, literally just experiment and see what comes out because it, it, you can get so many different rhythms. And you can actually, I've just realised what another thing I do there, which is, well, they did. I don't do it. I know I didn't come up with this. Stop it, Dave. Okay, so you can go from the fifth fret on high E. Third fret high E, and then you can actually use this finger to bar and get the second fret high E. Okay, so from the from D again. Okay, and again, I'm probably playing this different every time, but that's that's cool. That's what you want. That's exactly what you want. You never want to be playing it the same way twice, really. There always wants to be some little variant in there. Okay, so we're pretty much over halfway now. Um, so we've got so the whole thing together. I'll, I'll do it at kind of like a speed, and then once we get to the, the to the five chord, the E major, um, I'll I'll do the whole thing really really slow. So. OK, 
go. So we're there so far. So now we come to the turnaround, the, the, the five chord back to the four chord, back to the one chord. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're going to do a bass run into E major. So we're going to go to low E string on the third fret, low E string second fret, and then we're going to play an E, ma uh, an e major chord. Okay? And in context, it's like... Da -da -da. Then we're going to do that, which is basically uh, <coughs> when you hit your low E string open and you go to your kind of E major shape, which is um, uh, open E string, and then you want your middle finger on the second fret on the A string, ring finger wants to be on the second fret on the D string, and then what we want to be doing is kind of leaving the G string open for the time being, and then the B string and the high E, yeah, they don't have to be played, but you can if you want. Again, all down to feel. Really, really important. Really, really, really important fact. And again, something that can't be taught, you have to feel it yourself. Um, so what we're doing, instead of kind of like going straight to this kind of A major chord, what we're gonna do is once we hit that low E open, da -da -da, we're gonna play the, the G string open, and we're gonna hammer on to the first fret on the G string. And then we're gonna hit the high E string open on the bottom. So, da, da, da. Okay. And but with the whole chord down, because what you can do is, with your thumb, strum the E, A and D strings and get a bigger sound. And then do that like so. So, da -da -da. again, you don't have to do a full chord. You can actually go, you know, if you wanted to, so like that. But it does make it fatter if you do strum the E, A, and D first. That's a bit emphasized, but yeah, you see, you, hopefully you get what I mean. And then what we're going to do is do the um, bass walk up to the F sharp again. So open E, first fret. Uh, low E, and then we go back to the second fret, low E, and then we go back to that, back to that um, D. Well, well it, it's kind of like a D major seven with an F sharp in the bass chord. So, okay, and then once we do that, we want to go back to this. Back to the turnaround. Okay, so from the uh, from the A to the E to the D uh, to the turnaround it wants to kind of do something like this. Okay, I am terrified this is making sense, but hopefully it is making sense, everybody. But again, it's really cool. And again, you can do this this blues at any speed. You can do it really, well, not really, really quick because you lose it all. Uh, you lose kind of like bass and the melody of, of what's going on. But you can do it really slow or really quick. Again, it all comes down to you and how you feel when you want to play it. Okay, so I'm going to go through a whole thing now um, really slow. And I'm going to teach you some kind of like little guitar solo bits that are you know, really quite cool to do. Including one which is an absolute fiddly nightmare, but it's really good fun. Okay, so the whole thing, really, 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 really slow is this, like John Lee Hooker kind of style. Okay, so hope that all made sense. So that, so basically, that's the fundamentals that you've got an intro, and you've got kind of like the main kind of like you know one four five run through of a chord progression. I say 
A major, D, uh, D major 7, and D major 7 with an F sharp in the bass. Then back to your A major again with your added A note and G notes. And then an E major, D, uh, D, uh, D major 7 with the F sharp in the bass, and then back to your A. Okay? Okay, so now, for a little kind of guitar solo break, you can do stuff like this. So you can go back to kind of the uncho kind of thing. So if you go... So, little solo, you can go back to this. And then to your D. You know, and again, you can do whatever you want with that kind of thing. Or, you can do this, which is really, really cool. So, coming from the A, uh, the E. It's one of those really weird little blues licks. And what it is, is we're playing again. We're drone, always droning in the bass note key to this kind of blues style. It's always droning in that bass note. So it's the E. And what we're doing is uh, first finger wants to be on the 12th fret on the high E. And then you want your, sec uh, your middle finger to be on the 13th fret high E. And I'm getting a dead foot. And what you're doing is you're leaving the high E string where it is. And you're bending up the, um, the B string, a semitone. So, yeah, it's just, just a semitone. I just wanted to make sure. So I hope you can kind of see what's going on there. Like I say, the, the high E string stays where it is and you're just bending up that B string. And again, it's like that kind of claw technique where you're like, me, 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 like pinching the strings. And you can, can add in the high E string 14th fret. You know, stuff like that. Um, that's really, really cool. You can actually start a blues in A with that. So you've got another intro there already. Or, you know, or you could use it as a little solo. You know, you could do kind of whatever you want, really, with that D. Uh, with, with the A, sorry, I do apologise. Um, so yeah, so uh, we've got this little solo. So uh, coming out of that. You do this. Or you can go... make the bass notes more kind of staccato we like but 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 instead of kind of like a a kind of a flow like that you can kind of get a bit more kind of um staccato if you want you can again i i, I, I i'm just gonna stress this for the whole video but it really is important to just play it how you feel it and you know you will feel it when you play it you'll you'll know what you want to do with it if you want to keep it simple You'll keep it simple. If you want to kind of like overcomplicate it, you can overcomplicate it. If you want to play it fast, you want to play it slow, you want to play it mid tempo, you want to play it really staccato -y. You want to play it with open strings. You know, you want to play it with uh, par muted. You can do whatever you want. That, that's the beauty of this style of blues and blues in general is you, you can do whatever you want with it. You can play what you want. Um, and before I go into this last little lick, which I'll, which I'll, I'll show you in a sec, which is absolutely really, really. I, I, um, I, look, oh, I, I nicked it from Rory Gallagher, but I don't know where Rory Gallagher nicked it from because it's just this really awesome... It's, it's just really cool. I'll get to it in a minute. But um, but yeah, it, is, it really is important to kind of like, you know, play it how you feel it. You know, don't just kind of like run the numbers with it and just kind of like play it through. Just experiment and go, oh, what happens if I kind of go... You know, and you overextend it by accident. You know, it, that, that's fine. It, you know, it's, that's fine. Um, I remember hearing a story about Howlin' Wolf. Uh, when Howlin' Wolf came over to the UK, they put a band together for him. 
and um, uh, this 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 band were just kind of going, you know, just your, your, your basic kind of straight kind of twelve bar blues. Anyway, Howlin' Wolf came in, and he started you know just messing around. He was he was, he was uh, playing a harmonica with them, and uh, they stuck to the twelve bar structure. Anyway, Howlin' Wolf didn't, and he stopped them. And he explained, I want it to go an extra bar, basically, on this. So instead of kind of going... You know, which is what kind of like a standard 12 bar would do. He wanted that kind of like that, you know, whatever chord it was, to go an extra bar. And one of the uh, uh, one of the people in the band said, well, that's not a 12 bar. And Howlin' Wolf turned around and said, it's a 12 bar because I say it is. And I was like, you know, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue with Howlin' Wolf. Okay, so... Yeah, like if you want to extend it for a bar, do it. Robert Johnson does it all the time. Howlin' Wolf does it all the time. John Lee Hooker, you know, uh, Skip James. All these old blues guys will extend songs to fit however they felt or what they want to sing about. Robert Johnson's mad for it. There's so many little extensions in Robert Johnson's songs. It's crazy. Okay, so final little lick of the day, everybody, is this one. Okay, now this one's difficult. It really is a strain on your hand because you have to use your little finger because you need the dexterity of these. So your form has to be really low in the neck to do this kind of thing. It really does have to be low down. So what we're doing is we're barring the B and the high E strings on the fifth fret with our little finger. And this is hard to do, especially on acoustic. It's a lot easier on electric. But um, And then what we're doing is we're doing this walking bass line. Okay, so the walking bass line is starts off on the A string open, and then goes to the third fret A string, and then goes down to the second fret D, uh, fourth fret D, goes down to the G string second fret, and then back to the fourth fret D, second fret D, and then back to the uh, third fret on the A. So. Okay. And what we're doing, again, it's that kind of pinching technique, but it's all kind of like run... So I hope we'll be able to kind of see what I'm doing. So... Okay. And that's an absolute wrist breaker, but it sounds really cool. Okay, so that's the A walking bass line. The D is pretty much exactly the same. So we're going, now it's open D, third fret D, second fret G, fourth fret G, fifth fret G, and then back to the fourth fret G, second fret G, back to the third fret G, uh, D. So. And this one's difficult. Okay, so. Okay. Now we back go back to the A. And then we go to the E. So the E is the same pattern as the A, but again, it's just starting with the low E string. So low E string open. Third fret low uh, third fret low E. Second fret A. Fourth fret A. Second fret D. Back to the fourth fret A, second fret A, and then finishing up on the third fret on the low E. Okay, and then after that you go back to your to your rundown. Okay, so the whole thing is this. I'll do it really slow and break my wrist in the process. D. Back to A. E. 
A D And I did feel, actually fail, fail to mention that when you do the E, you only go as far as the second fret on the uh, D string. And the same thing with the D. You know, or you don't have to do that actually. You could go as far as the fourth fret on the A string. Actually, that'd probably be better actually. So you don't do the. You just go. So, bam. So, open E, third fret low E, f uh, second fret A, fourth fret A, and then the same thing on the D. And then to your, back to your A, and then. So, that thing would be. Okay. Okay, so there you go, kind of solos. Like I say, you can kind of go. Or, you know, whatever you want. Okay, you can do literally do whatever you want, and you can kind of play around to that to you know to your heart's content. Really, and like I say, always do what you feel. Always, always, always do what you feel. Okay, so the last and most important part is the ending. Okay. So the ending, you always want to end the blues on a suspense. You always want to end it unfinished. You know, uh, especially this kind of blues. So what we're going to do to end it is this. So, um... It always end it on that chord. So what it is, is just basically an A major with a G. It's like a seventh. It sounds like a seven, but it's kind of sustained, suspended, sorry. Okay, so after this, we play open G string, second fret G string, and then, and then go to that to finish on. So, and that's the most important part, is to end it on that, because everyone's like, is it finished? Because you could actually go, You know, and keep going. It's, it's one of those really cool things. So that's the most important part, everybody. I'm, you know, I'm either way. But, um... <laughs> and you hear it all over blues records, like Sunhouse, Robert Johnson, all that lot. They always end on those kind of chords. So, so uh, there we go, everybody. Um, little acoustic blues lesson. Uh, I hope it's been okay. I hope it's been, you know, I hope it's been informative. I hope, you know, there's, there's some stuff to take away. I hope it's made sense. More than anything, I'm terrified it, has, it hasn't made any sense whatsoever. So, uh, fingers crossed it has. And like I say, if anything I've failed to mention, hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing and, um, you know, and, and, and kind of learn it from that. Because like I say, I am a bit stupid and I tend to miss things sometimes. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. And I'll see you again on, on Wednesday for Q&A. And uh, yeah, have a great morning, afternoon and good evening. And go away and play some blues now. It's great fun. Trust me. <laughs>